Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 35, Responsibilities. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and beautiful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So we're recording kind of a little off schedule today. A bit. We normally record Saturday mornings, but we were a little energetic and decided to record Friday nights. Yeah. Uh, so this week we're talking about responsibility and we're going to kind of try and couch that as responsibility from the perspective of a teen. Awesome. But I think it's important to touch on responsibility in general. And some of the things that we're going to talk about here range in age as far as teenagers go. So some of the stuff you're probably going to find you're not going to be responsible for just yet, but it's stuff to look forward to. So it's. Kind of a good thing to get uh, a handle on it ahead of time. Awesome. So, shall we get into it? We shall. All right. So, what is responsibility? So, we're going to define it as during the teen years, children's needs for responsibility and autonomy get stronger. It's an important part of their path to young adulthood. To become capable adults, teenagers need to learn to make good decisions on their own. The process of helping children take responsibility and make decisions is a key task for parents. You have an important role in training and supporting your child to be ready for more responsibility. This means you need to plan when and in what areas you let your child start making decisions. How quickly you hand over responsibility to your child is up to you. It depends on things like your own comfort level, your family and cultural traditions, and your child's maturity. Ideally, you and your child should both feel comfortable with the shift of responsibility and the pace of change. Too much or too soon might leave you both feeling overwhelmed. Too little or too slow might end up with your child feeling impatient and rebellious. So that's kind of the definition. And I think the biggest takeaway of that definition is it's really not just on the teen. It's on the parents as well. Yeah. Um, And I, I think we keep a decent pace with you in giving you additional responsibilities. I think so. Yeah. Um, I don't think we force too much on you, do we? And I think um, you are progressively reaching out for more and more responsibilities. Case in point, your desire to learn how to cook. Two point. Um, so that's a huge responsibility. You know, it's, it's food handling. It's learning new skills. It's working in what could potentially be a dangerous environment with, you know, the stove and stuff like that. Um, and it's working with utensils that could be dangerous. So there's a lot of responsibility involved in that. And, uh, and I think you've done a very good job with it so far. Thank you. Um, but there's a lot of other things that we're going to talk about here. But I think the important takeaway from the definition is that responsibility is something that parents have to work with their children with. Yep. Uh, there are, there are certain, certain circumstances where you don't have the option and responsibility is kind of thrust on you, especially in the event of a uh, death of a parent or, you know, a single parent household because of a divorce or something like that, where yeah. sometimes the kids have to take on more responsibility. Um, so you don't have the luxury of a gradual transition. Yeah. But we'll talk more about that stuff. But 
you understand where we're coming from with responsibility right now. Yep. All right. So let's talk about the top 10 responsibilities of teens. So, and again, I said, you know, in the beginning that these go across the gamut of ages. So the first one that they have here is scholarship. So you're not in the process of trying to secure funding for college right now, but you will be at some point in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. So it says in the eyes of many parents, bringing home good grades is the number one responsibility of a teen. From the hours teens clock at school each day to after school homework, uh, after school homework time, teens have a responsibility to build their brains and mentally prepare for later in life successes. Um, so in this case, from a scholarship standpoint, they're talking about your academic achievements. So your number one responsibility is your academics. Is that something you would agree with? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I would definitely say it's a very important responsibility. Like, your academics is basically all dependent on you, whether you choose to learn or not. If you choose to learn, your academics will go up, and with wanting to have good academics comes great responsibility. Learning Thank how you, to Spider-Man. <laughs> like learning how to manage time with homework, like we did with our Managing Time podcast. Right. We talked about how to manage time while doing homework. Oh, and with that being said, that is a responsibility you need to take along with studying for tests. If you study for tests, you're guaranteed to get a higher grade. And... If you don't do any of those responsibilities, you're, guaran- you're probably going to get low academics along with pretty low grades in on your report card. Right. So basically, your academics are basically all responded on your sp- responsibility of doing your homework, studying for your test, making sure you understand the material. And yeah, I would say that's one of the major responsibilities for teens because everyone goes through that. Some responsibilities, some teens don't even go through, but the but academic standpoints are basically what every teen goes through. Right. That's that's a very good point, and and it's more than just getting good grades, studying and, and getting good grades. You need to make sure you're handing in assignments on time. You need to make sure you're completing your assignments. You need to make sure, you know, down to the basics that you're getting up in time to get to school. If you show yeah. up to school late. Or if you wind up showing up to your classes late. So even in school, there's a lot of personal responsibility that you take. Um, and, and, you know, you just moved into middle school this year. And you are now in, you have your, your day broken up by periods now. So now you have a responsibility as a student to get from class to class in a certain amount of time and be prepared for that class. So... This is preparing you to move on to high school and eventually college. So it's a gradual progression of uh, responsibilities just in your day-to-day duties. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that they talk about is chores. So though you likely won't slide a rent bill under your teen's bedroom door, you should make her do something to pay back for the roof you're putting over her head. Your teen has a responsibility to contribute to the household by completing chores. Doing her share of household tasks will teach her responsibility and free up some leisure time for you. Now, you do chores now, don't you? Yep. But your chores are not your way of, as this example gives, paying back towards the household or contributing to the household. You get paid for your chores. Yeah. Um. And I'll be honest with you, when I was a kid your age, I didn't get paid for my chores. Um, It was kind of expected that you were going to do what you could to contribute to the household, whether you were going to lighten the burden of your parents, whether you were going to improve conditions around the house, you know, alleviate an expense, you know, by doing the cutting the grass instead of having it cut or whatever. Um, so the situation that you have, I think is a little bit unique. Mm -hmm. Um, 
because the chores that you do now is you clean the basement, uh, which involves what? Tell us about what your chores involve. Okay, so what my chores involve is taking out the trash, vacuuming the basement, doing the laundry, and cleaning the downstairs bathroom. Now, aside from doing the laundry, which is, you know, by its nature, a several hour long process, just because how long it takes, how long do your chores, you're, and you're doing once a week, right? Yeah. And how long do your chores typically take you to do? Well, um, they typically take me about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. Um, except in the laundry, of course. Right. So the laundry is a matter of just staying on top of it throughout the weekend and making sure it's flipped and, and done. Yeah. So for 20 minutes a week, do you think your chores are overly burdensome to you? No, I've actually been doing them for a while now. Of course, when I started, they were a bit hard, but now it's basically just second nature. Right. And, you know, we've talked about your cooking, so you've taken on another chore um, without a reward. So that, that chore is entirely on you. I mean, to be honest, the reward is basically knowing that I was actually able to cook at a decent meal for you guys and even you guys complimenting me on it just makes my day it's satisfactory when when people enjoy the benefits of your labor isn't it <laughs> like seriously like like that's one of the things that i love about the job that i do is i get to help people all the time and yeah sometimes it's it could be a bit of a pain helping people because sometimes they're not very cooperative or, yeah, or it's frustrating uh, but ultimately at the end of the day i'm making things better yeah um, and for you, at the end of the day, you make a good meal, mommy and daddy sit down, we enjoy it, we have a good conversation, and we let you know that you did a good job. Uh, and there's, that's where that pride comes from in taking personal responsibility and uh, being successful with it. So the next thing that they talk about is employment, which we pay you for your chores, but that's really not a job. Yeah. So while some teams choose to go job-free through their teen years, taking it on a job is a great way to get a taste of the real world. It's wise to make your teen obtain part-time employment. If he or she only works a small number of hours each week, this job will give them the opportunity to dip their toes into the world of work. This will also allow your teen some extra spending money. Now, right now, you're not working. You're too young to work at this point in time. Yeah. I think New Jersey, I think you need to be 15 or 16 to get working papers in Jersey, and then there's yeah. restrictions on on what you can do. But you do make a few dollars with the chores that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I notice when we do go shopping to the mall or to a toy show or something like that, you're very selective in how you spend your money. Yeah. Why is that? I mean, I I feel like the, I second guess myself. Like, I always think, am I really going to use this or do I really want this? Because, you know, you don't want to waste your money right. on a bunch of random junk. I know that's how some people live and it's a pretty unhealthy habit. Yeah. And I'm definitely pretty sure I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. I literally have to look at something and second guess myself. And I know second guessing isn't a good thing, but in this case, well, I think in this it case, actually, I don't it, think there's a problem with it. Yeah, it saves me money. So, so um, one of the chatters in the chat room just told us that 14 years of age uh, is actually New Jersey labor law. So, oh, okay. So we will be kicking you out the door shortly to get a job. Oh my. <laughs> Well, I know, like, once I'm done with my summer camp, Mommy kind of wants me to get a summer job. And I think that's a great job, a great idea. And you can even get a job during summer camp, It's you know, eventually. Yeah, I just need to find out where I'm going to be going. For the, a new summer camp? No, not for a new summer camp, but, like, what I'm actually going to be doing for a job. Uh, well, you know, probably you'll... Wind up getting the same job all teenagers get, working at retail or fast food or something yeah. like that. More than likely. Um, but I think the the takeaway is the you're making money now, so you're technically you're working now. Technically. Um, 
But because you're doing the effort to earn that money, it gives you an appreciation for it. So you don't just spend it frivolously. Yeah. And I think that's really an important thing about employment for teens. Uh, um, no, we're not going to kick her out. Uh, our chatter is concerned that we're going to kick you out. Oh <laughs> uh, so the next thing that we have on the list is financial planning. Now, you don't do a lot of this, but you do do some of it. We'll touch on that in a second. Okay. What little money your teen earns through whatever job she manages to acquire will provide her uh, the opportunities to practice sound financial decision making. Your teen has a responsibility to manage her own money efficiently. This will uh, necessarily include setting up a bank account and perhaps even starting a savings account in which she can sock away uh, cash to cover whatever education costs she may have as she moves past high school. So you're doing this already. So explain to us um, what financial management you're doing right now. Okay, so I don't really spend money a lot. Meaning um, whenever you hand me money, I always keep it where I keep my money. Right. Eventually, if I get too much money, I talk with you guys. And I actually have, we set up, mommy set up a bank account for me. Well, just for the record, we're not the Rockefeller, so there's really no such yeah. thing as too much money, but we have certain thresholds in which you'll hold on to it. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is because if you're holding on to it, then it's not gaining any interest for you. Exactly. So whenever I seem to have too much money, um, you guys would sit me down and we'd split up the money. Of course, I would still have some money um, with me just for like... If I want if we were going to a tour show, and if I would spend exactly, money. Um, because so then you would then mommy would take the money and put it in my bank account, and right. So mommy set up a, a savings account for savings. you. Yeah. So the savings account pays an interest rate. So the more money you put in there, the more money you make at the end of the month. Yeah. So since you were just sitting on the money anyway, it made little sense to not. You know, it didn't make sense not to put it in. Yeah. So now instead of it sitting in your wallet and making nothing for you, now it sits in a bank account and makes a few cents a month. And as we continue to put more and more in, it makes more money for you. So it's like working without working. Basically. So that's really the first step to financial responsibility. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be pretty good when I get older with financial responsibility. Yep. And I think you are. I think you, you're getting good experience now with it. Yeah. So, congratulations. Thank you. So, volunteerism. This was a, a subject that we had touched on in a family discussion earlier in the week. Yeah. During teen years, time exists for individuals to give back through volunteering. Help your teen keep uh, his or her feet firmly planted on the ground and learn more about the real world by making them responsible for volunteering in some sh some shape or form. So... The interesting point that we had here was that it's difficult when you go to apply to college nowadays to not have some kind of volunteer background with you because all the colleges are looking for it now because it's a show of character. Um, so one of the things we're lacking in right now, I think, is that volunteerism. And, and in our defense, there's not a lot of things in our community that someone your age could volunteer for. Yeah. But you're getting to the point now where um, there's clubs that you can get associated with. And those clubs themselves wind up doing charitable drives and, and things for the community and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So by getting involved in some of these after school clubs, it's going to introduce you to this concept. Um, have you seen any, any of these clubs advertising in school at this point? Yeah, they've been pretty advertising now. Um, I really don't know right now what clubs I'm even going to join because there's only really one club I was thinking of joining, but I don't know what ones are best for me. And that's one of the things that we're going to have to sit down and, and see what options are available and uh, kind of figure out what will fit right. Uh, one of the chatters uh, mentions that networking is also important. 
Um, and networking from this perspective is getting to know people um, in the scholastic world in this case here. So you'll get to the, you'll get to know your professors, you'll get to know your teachers, but more importantly, you'll wind up getting to know people that are in the industry that you want to work in. Uh, and by building those relationships early on, they'll help you professionally later in life too. That um, makes sense. Internships being an excellent example. My company, we're big on internships. Okay. So during the summer, we'll have 15 to 20 interns come through and work in different departments um, where it's relevant to their course studies in college. Uh, and by doing that, they're getting hands-on experience. They're building interpersonal relationships and they're learning how to operate in a professional environment. Um, and they're getting associated with people who know what they're trying to do and they can mentor under them too. So it's a very valuable experience. Maybe when I'm older, I can actually maybe try out that and see if that works for me. And I think that would be a great, a great way to go for you there. Um, and there's different type of internships. There's paid internships. There's non-paid. And there's um, some of the colleges in the area. I know, for instance, Drexel, uh, they do a mandatory uh, internship program where part of your college course is actually doing an internship. So, you know, like two-thirds of the course is in classroom learning and one-third, you know, um, roughly those proportions, one-third is actually out in the field because it's an engineering college primarily. Uh, one third of it has you actually in the field doing the work, and and most of the graduates of Drexel are very successful when they get out. Uh, the next thing we have is decision making. So, uh, your progeny is no longer a child. During their teen years, they must engage in decision making. To allow her to take on this responsibility, you must step back and let them captain their own ship. If you don't do this, you are denying the opportunity to practice making the right decisions and potentially setting him up or her up for failure later in life. So do we, how, how rate us as parents on how much freedom we give you to make decisions? Hmm. Um, so what would one be? What do you mean? Like the scale. 10 being, you know, we're the best. Okay. So um, are we a one? Is that what you're suggesting? No. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, hmm. I think you're about a seven or eight. Okay. That's higher than I thought we'd rate, but I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, I, you don't, I mean, you definitely give me decision. Like, you definitely, like, allow me to make decisions, like, now since I'm allowed to sort of, like, you know, stay home while you guys go out shopping or something, you give me the decision if I want to go or stay. Right. Your mommy also occasionally, when she would want to go to the mall, she gives me the decision if I want to go or I want to, you know, stay. Right. And you would also, and sometimes you guys would take me to, um... You know, some of our other things. Yeah, we still we drag you out for some of the forced fun activities. Yeah. I mean, I do en I do enjoy most of them. Sometimes I get annoyed, but that's like, Well, you I know, appreciate your like, honesty. You know, that's just me, the moody teenager right now. Well, the moody preteen, almost exactly. teenager. Um, but I can definitely say you aren't, like, I definitely want to say that they sh like parents shouldn't be a ten. Like parents w sometimes want to aim towards a ten because they think it's the best. Right. But like, remember the one time where you wanted um, me to level you guys on how strict you are. Mm -hmm. If you're ten on, ha if you're a ten, like being you're not strict at all, that means your child can basically do whatever they want. They'll probably be coming to. I don't like the phrase, but the word spoiled brat. They're probably okay. going to turn into a spoiled brat. They're going to want everything, and you're basically going to not be able to change them because you actually... And if and it's like the same for decision-making. If you make if you allow them to do too many, like, they might need help, but you're like, you can figure it out on your own. And 
if they really need help with the decision making, like, you should help them. You shouldn't be like, okay, you can figure everything out on your own. I'm going to go to the sh shop or whatever. Well, that's a very good point. You know, it's all about balance, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that balance is a gradual transition to equipping you to making all those decisions. So to drop it all on you at once, not a good idea. Yeah, definitely. To not have any discipline at all, not a good idea. Yeah, like just choosing everything for your child. It's basically like if your child was three. At that point, you basically decide everything for them. Right. Like, as they get old, I think a rule should be as they get older, you can gradually let them make more decisions because eventually when they get older out and you're still in the phase, like maybe around seven or eight, when they realize they can have a choice, it's just going to cause more conflicts. Um, so you should definitely keep the discipline at the age group as a ch as if they're like a newborn, of course, you got to be a one. But then as right. they gradually get older, you can just start lowering it. But, like, you shouldn't, like, even when they're an adult and they live on their own, you should still offer help if they need it. Okay. I think that was very well said. Thank you. So the next thing that we have on our – I really need to find a way to get the, the chat stream up so you can see it because we have some great comments in the chat screen. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, one of our chatters uh, says uh, – Everybody fails. You will fail. Uh, failures are roots for growing. Yeah, so. that, that's like you always say to me. You're okay with mistakes because that's how you learn. Exactly. Nobody learns from their successes. You only learn from your failures. Yeah. Uh, facing consequences. So this is a good one. I'm, I'm always big on this. Uh, during your teen's childhood, you may have shielded her from consequences, protecting her as she wasn't mature enough to face them on her own. When your child becomes a teen, it's vital that you make their, her responsible for facing these consequences. Uh, if your teen messes up, <clears throat> she has the responsibility to pay the piper. If you don't make her do so, she'll never learn. So this kind of touches on what you were just saying, where you know you have to gradually be introduced to these things, and you have to be able to, able to face up to the consequences. Don't blame somebody else for your failures. Learn from them and move on. Yeah, because, like, if you basically just, like, say when your child was very young um, and you just, and they did something wrong, but you try to just walk it off and say, like, it's not that big of a deal, Eventually, the child's probably going to become a troublemaker at that point, and they'll basically just think, oh, I can do anything I want and not have any consequences. Right. They think they're above the law at that point. Yeah, that, and that could eventually turn them into maybe a criminal. Absolutely. If you follow it to its logical conclusion, sure. Yeah. And which so is, if you don't think the rules apply to you, you're going to break the rules of society, which in turn means breaking the law. Yeah, and I definitely think this goes along with you should keep a steady balance of letting your children decide things. You should keep a steady balance of telling them how to do consequences. As a as when they're young, sure, they're not introduced to consequences. But like around 7 or 8, you should definitely in talk about the consequences like that's when they probably get like grades and homeworks at that point I think that's a good point it's a good place to start yeah yeah and of course as they gradually get older you get more consequences like i know in my school apparently like they have a consequence for everything now <laughs> just <laughs> sounds saying. an awful lot like prison when you put it that way <laughs> <laughs> just saying they seem to have a consequence for almost everything okay well and that's because they're trying to make you accountable i know like that's how, like, they're helping the parents and the teenager by, like, show, telling them, hey, you can't get off for, like, any everything now. You have to, like, like, even cheating. There's, like, a pretty b b big, um... So there wasn't consequences to cheating before Like, grade? there was consequences, but they're way worse now, which oh. I think... If you, if you enhance the consequences, like, you can enhance it a little bit and the teen will probably follow it. But if you enhance it too quickly, like, one year it's like you will, 
you'll lose points to now you basically have like detention solitary confinement and bread and water right sure like <laughs> that kind of thing like then that's just too much and the kid will probably be in terror at that point so yeah. gradually work up the consequences um to the point of their age along with helping them to giving them decision making like grat it's the same with that like gradually as they get older yeah, get, right. um show them more consequences and just gradually go up you're absolutely right family time is a responsibility of yours familiar relationships are important and should be regularly tended to make it a responsibility of your teen to spend family uh, spend time with the family this time can be in the form of family dinners arranged game nights or simple evenings at home when your teen leaves home in just a few short years, you will be glad you kept this responsibility on their list. So that is one that I think is a huge responsibility because I think we have a pretty tight family unit here. Yeah. Um, and I think we do a lot of things together, but I also think that we have the freedom to kind of go off and do our own thing on our own time. What do you think? Yeah, I can definitely say that because... Um I know now I've kind of become the teen that basically just watches YouTube and plays her video games in her room. Oh, so like every other teen in the world right now. Yeah, and isn't actually that social. But I definitely still spend time with you guys. I always make sure when I get home, before I do my homework, I always make sure to call both of you. Yep. Um, I, and I look forward to that call now. Yeah, me me too, because since now I can't actually say hello to you anymore because... At my old elementary school, whenever I got home, the first thing I would do, well, I'd put my stuff down, but I would always come down to you and say hello, give you a hug, give you a hug, and I'd of course rate the day like I would normally would. Yes, you would. And I can still do that, but instead I just call you. Gotta love technology, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, sometimes, oh yeah, also you guys stalk me. Well, we do with the cameras and the ring doorbells, yes. Yeah, but <laughs> that's at least... Showing that I got home safe. Right. And it's for your own protection. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that some of the family stuff that we do centers around the fun stuff. Yeah. I um, know I know one of our traditions is going to Dave and Buster's. Right. For our, you know, we do birthdays at Dave and Buster's. And we do special occasions. Special occasions, Father's Day. Yeah. Mother's and day. for like any other day, like if we're feeling bored, we're like, like, Sometimes we would go, hey, let's go to Dave and Buster's today. Right. Yeah, we have fun. Um, or, you know, every day we eat family together unless, you know, someone has an appointment or something like that. Yeah, m normally mommy just say. We weren't going to throw her under the bus, though. Mm -hmm. Not naming any names. Yeah, not naming any names. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Our, I hope she's not watching this right now. Our, our family, our daily family time consists of. You know, that 20 minutes around the dinner table, we find out how everyone's doing. Um, and and we've talked about each other's day. If, uh, for our chat room, Dave & Buster's is a, uh, it's a restaurant with a big giant arcade attached to it. Yeah. So we'll go there. Usually on Sundays, we'll get, uh, uh, they have what they call their eat and play. So they've got the pre-made menu up that you get your food for lunch and they give you a free game card uh, as part of your meal. Yeah. And then uh, when you finish eating, you go in the back where the what they call the midway is, and you spend another hour or two back there playing games. And we earn tickets, and we buy all kinds of crazy stuff with the tickets. Yeah, because there's like the little small room in the back where you can get a bunch of prizes. Yeah. So. Yeah, at that point, I'm not actually that bad at spending, only because it's not real money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's we're we're quick to spend that stuff because we we. You know, they got a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, but still, like, sometimes I don't really buy stuff because, like, sometimes they don't really have the stuff I like. But I always make sure to, when, I know whenever I go there, I try to buy at least one thing now, only because I just feel like I want to. Well, because you want to walk away with some tangible yeah. reward. And even if it's just, like, a piece of candy. But the beauty of it is, is you saved up your tickets long enough to have the ability to do that. Yeah. But I don't want to get too far off topic. Yeah. So family time is very important. Yeah. That's that's where I, we should leave that. 
Relationship building. It's never too early to network, which our chatters have mentioned to us already. Um, break down the walls that exist between your teens and adults, allowing your teen to converse maturely with adults as a means of building her ability to do so. Is a yeah, I think I misread that one. Yeah, I think so. Uh, in a few short years, she'll be done with school and the relationships she has fostered will serve her well. So, again, this is reinforcing the idea of networking at this point in time. I know you're an introvert predominantly. Yeah, even though I'm an ambivert, I'm mainly an introvert. Right. So, that's something that you're going to need to start working to get over. I know. Um, and not just kids your age. Like this even talks about, you know, having conversations with adults. I think I think you're mature enough and intelligent enough to sit down and have conversations with adults. That's the kind of conversations you and I have. You know, occasionally I get a little goofy and crack a joke, but yeah. ironically enough, you tend to be the most mature one in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, which is weird. I mean, of course I'll occasionally throw out some slang, you know, teenage me. Right. You're still a teenager. I have to remember that. <laughs> well, almost a teenager. I'm still a preteen right now. Right. But guess what? October 23rd. October 23rd. We're going to have to do a podcast on it. <laughs> yeah. So the last thing that we have on the list that is your responsibility is future planning. The perennial question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, good And my Lord. eternal answer to that is, I don't want to grow up. Uh, the perennial question is no longer one that your child can dodge. As your teen steps closer to exiting high school, she must start to plan for the future. Effective future planning, including college, but not only college, because college isn't for everyone. Yeah. Uh, including college selection and application is a must. Um, so if you're going to start looking to do college, you're looking at college, college's before uh, your senior year in high school. Yeah. Okay. So you're starting pretty early on. Uh, you'll probably be doing college prep courses. Um, you have the benefit of um, immediately getting uh, credits at the local college, uh, state college that's affiliated with your school. Um, you get, I think they said the first three credits, five credits were free. So you're getting a jump start already. So you have the benefit of that. Okay. Which is very nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, but even before you get to that point, you need to start thinking what you want to do. So you are how old now? Twelve. And what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, I can definitely say it's changed from when I've been younger. I knew I had pretty tough goals as a child. I remember one time I wanted to be a vet. Okay. Still obtainable. Yeah, still obtainable. Like, I'm pretty sure anything now I could be obtained if I really put my heart into it. I agree. Um, I can definitely say one time I remember I wanted to be an inventor. Right. But if I had to go off my hobbies slash interests, I think the one that would stand out the most right now is something that does with art or science. Okay. Those are the ones that seem to stand out right now. Both are potentially very lucrative and very enjoyable. Yeah, I um, know careers. Yeah, I know we, I know we both know that I'm a pretty good artist, and we're probably going to make a podcast on that. Yep. And we also know I'm a pretty big science nerd. Um, even I, though you didn't get your factual Friday this week, even oh though you my, had the answer. I I don't I didn't do it this week. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, it's basically this one question where you have to look it up for two days, write it down in a discard, I would give it to my science teacher, and on Friday she'd take a drawing as long as it was the right answer. If you won, you got, like, a small prize, and I just forgot to do it the two days. So for the I did it last time, and I didn't win. Okay, okay. Just because you didn't get pulled out doesn't mean anything. So mm -hmm. for the record... Your question this week was, who was the first American in space? And the answer, of course, is... Alan Shepard. Right. Not John Glenn. Why is it not John Glenn? Because he was the first American on orbit. Right. Very good. 
So at least now it's on record. Yeah. Um, so future planning. So you want to be a scientist or you want to be, oh, our, our, our chatter says art with science. Uh, truly sounds like a medical prodigy, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> the human anatomy can take over 30 years to study. Wow. That's a long time to study. Wow. I mean, I remember you saying one time you could actually, I could actually become an architect, bringing in my art, but also having a suitable career. Yeah, and I think, I think that's a great path for you because architects are... I would describe them as artistic engineers. They have to build something that looks stunning, but it also has to be functional and not fall down. I know. And that's also might be where science and math come in. Absolutely. Yeah. So that might be the, the route they go. So yeah, it might actually be that way. Might be a natural fit. So I think that's all we had for the responsibilities. We'll come back and we'll talk real quickly about 10 tips to make your teenager more responsible. So this comes from a site that we've used many times in the past called momjunction.com. Okay, I've never actually heard that. I don't remember hearing that. Oh, maybe I haven't mentioned it then. Maybe. So the first thing they say is set expectations. Yes, you love your child without expectations, but now is a good time to set some. Once your teen knows what is expected of her, she'll be forced to work towards it. This is the first step towards learning responsibility. But make sure the expectations are reasonable. Impossible expectations will just end up frustrating both your teen and yourself. So tell me, do we set expectations? Yes, um, but they're not like hardcore. So we have realistic expectations of you. Yeah. Um, do you feel that you achieve those expectations? Well, I definitely know with the grade point average, I've definitely exceeded the expectations. Good example. Um, I'm definitely able to see what other expectations do you guys want? I know well, you always complain to me about laundry. Were you expected to do your chores? How well do you think you would accomplish those? I do it pretty well as long as, like, I don't forget. Right. You're expected to treat others with uh, compassion and respect. Do you think you achieve that? Yes, even though sometimes they irritate me. Then again, I don't really talk to people as much anymore, so... Fair point. Honestly, I think I've got a pretty down pat. I think for the most part, you do achieve your expectations, which is why, you know, occasionally mom and I will bump those expectations up for you and challenge you a little bit more, because that's how you grow. Mm-hmm. Number two is make a chores list. Well, your chores are pretty straightforward. You kind of know what to do. Yeah. Uh, so in your case, until we start adding more chores on there, um, cleaning, doing laundry, and cooking are pretty easy to keep track of. Yeah. I will say, though, one thing that you tend to do is you um, use technology to help you. So if you're, if you're flipping the laundry, you'll set a timer on Alexa, and Alexa will remind you. So it's very smart use of your time. Also, I'm very, um, I'm very surprised you didn't hear that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you were speaking pretty fast, so I just wanted to say that. Uh, yeah, we, we have uh, two Amazon Echoes in the room with us here, so they tend to uh, perk up when the magic word is said. The magic word. Um, allow choices. Life is about choices. The sooner your team realizes that, the better. So get her involved in household decisions, planning to buy a new household appliance or planning a vacation. Ask your teenager for her views. This will give her a sense of responsibility. Uh, you can also plan weekly family meetings where you as a family can decide on menu plans, chores lists, and recreational ideas. So just before we came up here to do the podcast, we went through the weekly menu. Yeah. And you had input because you wanted to know which meals you were cooking. Yep. Um, so I think we kind of, you know, hit the nail on the head here. We brought you in when we were doing the vacation planning. Yeah. For our upcoming vacation. Um, we don't really do a lot of uh, household purchases. I think the biggest thing was the windows recently, but that That's was like it. 
Yeah, we didn't really have any input there. We basically yeah. went with baseline stuff. So. I couldn't really, like, put anything out there anyway, so. Right. So, but you had input on decorating the studio. You know, you have a number of items in the studio, including your Lego studio set. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some of your Barbies in the back there. We have um, a couple over here. So you had some input in decorating the studio, too, which was kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, and we definitely leave the studio decoration up to you for the holidays. Uh, so far, yeah, we've only had, what, Easter? Yeah, I think Easter. And even though it wasn't that big, but I, de I definitely think it was a pretty good yeah, so one. Uh, with the winter holidays coming, I'm sure we'll decorate for, for the winter holidays. Yeah, I'll too. have to ask Mommy about for some Hanukkah decorations. Yes. Pretty sure she has plenty. Um, number four on the list is Trust Her. This is for our parents. This is a big one. It's not easy, but learn to trust your teen to make the right choices. If she says she'll babysit your five-year-old while you go out for a movie, let her. Your instinct might scream otherwise, but for once, overlook it. Your trust is just the incentive she needs to be more responsible. Uh, big trust um, let that we gave you on this one here was cooking. Um, having, having you work with knives and fire uh, is terrifying. Yeah. Um, not that I think you would do anything malicious, but I didn't want you getting hurt. Yeah, that's actually probably stuff we're going to be using in science anyway. So. Right, that's true. Um, so it's that was one of our big things from a trust standpoint, and I think you've rewarded that very well. Uh, let there be consequences. Uh, we were just talking about this. Yep. Um, don't protect her. If she's not finished her assignment, let her face the punishment coming her way. Don't write a note to help her out. This way she'll learn the truth about natural consequences. You reap what you sow. So if you do not do uh, your chores, there are consequences. The immediate one being you do not get paid, Yeah, which is huge. Um, also, you'll get needled by your father. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't let you rest until it's done. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm kind of relentless like that. But there's consequences, and, and you've not shirked that responsibility, and that's a credit to you. Yeah. Reward her, and I do. Ground it with no cell phone, our, our chatter says. <laughs> Boy, that would be devastating for you, wouldn't it? You just got your new phone, too. That would really stink. Ground it with no iPhone 11. Poor you. It's a good thing you do your chores, huh? <laughs> I can find other means of entertainment, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you could, because Lord knows you've got them. Yep. Uh, reward her. No, we're not talking about bribing her, although that's very effective too, I'll say. <laughs> but your teen needs to know that good begets good. So if she lives up to her part of the bargain, reward her. How you reward her depends completely on you. A few words of appreciation, like with dinner. A pat on the back, a book, a trip to watch her favorite movie, anything that shows you've noticed her efforts. And that's human nature. You know, I have uh, a staff of people that I manage at work. And, you know, it's important to let, give them words of encouragement and let them know when they're doing a good job. And, uh, and every human being needs that. Do you get that, by the way? Uh, yes, I um, not only do I get it at home, but I also get it ex at school. And we actually have this one thing where if you get enough points, there's this one little shop. And during your POP, you could always go down and use up your points for, like, anything. I I don't really know what there is. But I also know at my science class, if you get, like, a bunch of box tops, um, I think... Five box tops gets you one extra credit point, along with actual Friday. Like if you get uh, pulled, you um, you can choose from a small prize. Along with my ELA, they also do like a ticket pulling. If you do something good, you earn tickets, and by the end of the marking period, and no, not by the end of the marking period. I no, like every Friday. I Every other Friday, they would pull your tickets, and you could get, like, a small piece of candy. So they bribe the kids, too. See, bribing works. That's really important. Mm. That's, that's the rule to learn here. 
Yeah. Uh, so the next two are pretty straightforward here. So we've okay. got, and we've talked about it, so I won't go into great detail. Get her to volunteer um, and get her to join youth groups. Yep. So we've talked about the importance of those. Um, the next thing that they had here was help her set goals. We've talked about that as well. Now this is a, this is I think this is kind of an important one too. Uh, talk to her about her dreams and long term plans. If she has a career in mind, sit down and chalk out a, a route map or roadmap. Okay. Uh, help her take small steps, keeping the big picture in mind. Tell her the journey is hers to make. Let her know that her dream is her responsibility. Only she can make it come true. But one of the things I will say here as a technique to this, and we've talked about this previously, is whenever you have something that's laid in front of you, a challenge, uh, a problem, an obstacle, a tragedy, uh, a a school assignment, whatever it is, don't look at it as the whole if you find it overwhelming. Because a lot of stuff hits you and it's overwhelming. My suggestion would be take what it is and then figure out how to break it into smaller parts. And you tackle those smaller parts. And you may be able to take a series of those smaller parts, tackle them and take care of them, then put those together and build on those to get to the ultimate end goal. Uh, When you do that and you take a big problem down and you cut it into uh, smaller obtainable goals to get to where you want to be, it makes it a lot easier to get there. And the last thing that we have here, uh, I think sort of sums up the entire discussion is respect her individuality. You can't live her life. Uh, your teen needs to learn that her life, all the good and bad is hers to live. You as a parent need to accept and respect that her way of doing things may be different If she makes a choice that is contrary to your wish, accept it. This can mean something small, like a dress she wants to buy, or it can be something life-changing, like a career choice. Um, And I can tell you that mommy and daddy will always be there to help you and to guide you and to offer advice, not there to judge. So, you know, ultimately, the decisions that you face in life will be yours, And you'll face the consequences, but as long as mommy and daddy are around, you don't have to face them alone. We will be there to help you any way we can. Some things we can help you with. Um, But for the most part, I think, I think mommy and daddy have a handle on accepting you as a responsible, trustworthy individual. What do you think? I definitely think that is true. And I definitely thank you for that. I'm pretty sure without you guys, I probably wouldn't have um, all, I probably wouldn't have gotten to the point in my life I am now. I mean, probably wouldn't even be alive without you guys. Well, yes, your early survival is, you know, we, we do have a large role in that, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys have definitely taught me the right and wrong, and I've definitely, and I definitely think I've applied all that you've also given me a sense of logic um and you've also um whenever i've come into conflict you always like help me out it's normally stuff i worry about because i worry about things a lot now right and i really have to thank you for that because i know i am lucky and not that meant and not a lot of kids are as lucky as i am well i appreciate that That was all we had this week. Uh, We'll come back. We'll give you a chance to give your final thoughts on responsibilities and any shout outs that you have. To you, my dear, for your final thoughts. Alrighty. So for those in the audience who are teenagers or basically anyone, um, know their responsibilities are important. Yes, you take on more. Yes, at times they can be they can have hardships. But like I said earlier, as you gradually get older for the parents watching who have um thing 
who have who want to give their teens responsibilities, just know you gotta gradually work up to it. Gradually teach them about consequences, gradually show them consequences, gradually let them have their own decisions, and always learn to respect their decisions, whether... But, and if you do think that some of their decisions aren't right, just know it's always important to talk with your teen about it. And don't ever be afraid to talk to your teen about responsibilities. And make sure to let them know the responsibilities are important. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to give a shout out today. And I'm going to give a shout out to uh, our chat room participant here. Yay. Uh, Ghost Floof, who just uh, messaged us saying... Flabbergasted as a viewer, your daughter truly mature for her age. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for that wonderful compliment. Um, and hopefully um, we'll, ha we'll be back next week with uh, another great podcast. Um, feel free to check out our website at www.insightsintothings.com. You can get uh, transcripts, show notes, uh, video and audio feeds, and... Uh, <laughs> Ghost Floof is embarrassed now. <laughs> um, all of our information is up there. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone.